Um, so I'm here to give you the Board of Health annual report um, for 2018. Um, everybody should have received a copy of our report. Um, so you have that reference. We put it in a new format this year. Um, if you notice it's completely different than it has been in the other year. Um, and we aligned it with the 10 essential public health services. And I will go into detail with each of these. So the first one is to monitor health status to identify and solve community health problems. So under here, we have our health indicators and our community health improvement plan work. So we constantly track health data. Um, it's sent to us by many different organizations. Um, we mostly track the New York State Prevention Agenda. <clears throat> so these are all relevant health indicators that we looked at um, when we did our Community Health Improvement Plan in 2016. You'll see what the baseline is um, and then the year underneath. Unfortunately, health data um, is <coughs> usually quite old. So the work that we've done in our current community health improvement plan is not reflected in, say, our obesity rates. Yes, the obesity rates did go down for both children and adults. Um, but the work that we have been doing for the last three years is not reflected there. Hopefully, this trend will continue. Um, but we'll have to see with our next community health improvement plan or community health assessment, which will be done in 2019. So our community health improvement plan progress, we worked um, quite a bit on this this year. We have Anna Plotsworth, who is our public health specialist dedicated to working on the community health improvement plan. She worked on worksite wellness with several um, different organizations. We have four that we're currently working with right now. We worked with an app developer to produce the Naturally Healthy app, which um, will be marketed to the community very soon. Um, and Smarter Lunchrooms, we are working on implementing that at South Lewis. Harvest of the Month, and that is a curriculum um, in the classroom to teach kids about fruits and vegetables and how to cook them. Um, that's going on in Copenhagen. And the Comprehensive School Physical Activity Program, we have commitment from all five school districts um, to implement this program. We have a training going on March 7th, which is the initial steps of that. That was one Yes. Um, so this is our Naturally Healthy app. It is available for download um, on Android and on iPhone. Um, we're waiting on our app developer to just change one thing. So within this app, you will be able to find all of the farm stands, farmers markets, nutrition classes, <coughs> physical activity classes, hiking trails, anything to do with keeping yourself healthy here in Lewis County. Is there a link in, uh, Ashley, on your web page through the county for that app? No, Not we to do yet. That. We were just waiting on that yeah. one change before we did that. So the second um, essential public health service is diagnose and investigate health problems and health hazards in the community. Under this, we have our seasonal influenza, communicable disease control, rabies control, immunizations, and lead poisoning prevention. So 2000, well, 2017-2018 was a high severity season. You can see that um, 2018 is in the lightish blue there. Um, so that was pretty high. This season, um, so far, <coughs> has proved to not be as bad as last year. We had a total of 532 cases. That was confirmed 
lab confirmed cases. So there was more than that in the county. We did 402 communicable disease investigations, um, 156 rabies exposure reports were received. Of those, 15 people received rabies post-exposure treatment. We tested 52 <coughs> animals for rabies, three of which were positive, a bat, a raccoon, and a skunk. In the immunization program, 535 individuals came into our clinic and were vaccinated. We did an additional 281 individuals at um, sites throughout the community, mostly larger businesses and schools. And we administered 289 tuberculosis skin tests. If anybody has any questions at any time, is it too late feel free. for the shots now? The flu shots? No. No, we administer right through until June when it expires. Um, the lead poisoning prevention program, all children ages one and two are recommended um, to be screened for blood lead. We had 454 children screened um, in 2018. And you can see over to the right there um, where they fell. We have to do um, outreach and education with levels five to 10 less than 10, and we have to do phone case management for 10 to 14, and we have to do home visits for 15 and above. So going out with an environmental sanitarian from our Watertown district office and assessing where the, lead, <coughs> where the lead hazards are in the home. We had four children um, that fell into that category. In so the the four children. Various homes. Various homes. Um, essential service three is to inform, educate, and empower people about health issues. Our evidence-based programs fall in here, health education, and our new health communication and social marketing plan. Um, <clears throat> the diabetes prevention program is a year-long program. It's promoting healthy lifestyle changes. We had 66 participants in 2018 that lost a total of 725 pounds. In the Diabetes Self-Management Program, that's a six-week long program, teaching individuals <coughs> who already have a diabetes diagnosis how to effectively manage that to prevent further complications. We have 36 participants um, in that program. We attended 20 outreach events, um, so that was various sites throughout the county, farmers markets, health fairs, senior meal sites, a couple of events at libraries, and obviously the Lewis County Fair. And we covered a wide variety of topics. In the summertime, ticks and rabies is always our hot topic. Um, we have a health communication and social marketing committee who developed the plan to go along with this. So we were looking to make sure that all of our messaging going out was consistent and clear um, and people were receiving it. So that plan was completed this year. We worked on branding, making sure everything that comes out from us looks like it's from public health. And we have a new logo, which was just adding Lewis County under the general nation, national public health logo. Um, we also merged websites with the county. We did keep our domain name so all of our previous marketing materials people could still go to lewiscountypublichealth.com. We did 332 Facebook posts and we had 303,000 views and about 27,000 people that liked, shared, or commented. I shouldn't say people. Those were likes, shares, and comments, because they're probably a lot of the same people. <laughs> um, our fourth essential service is mobilize community partnerships um, in action to identify and solve health problems. So I did a general slide on community partnerships, and specifically our suicide prevention coalition, because this is 
part of our community health improvement plan. So <clears throat> our community partnerships are very vital to our success. We should be seen as the chief health strategist kind of guiding other people with doing the work so we can have a collective impact to improve the health of all. Um, public health is represented on 37 community groups and we lead six of these groups. Specifically, the Suicide Prevention Coalition, um, they launched their website in June, lewisslivesmatter.com. So far, they've had 971 page views. Um, they also launched the Community Crisis Response Team. This is a team that um, is comprised of volunteers in the community that respond to a traumatic loss. And they guide the family to get them the resources that they need. The coalition also distributed over 200 gun locks. Um, they did, they trained 10 individuals in QPR training and 29 individuals in Safe Talk training. Both of these trainings are designed to help individuals recognize thoughts of suicide and help that individual um, to get to the help they need. How were the gun locks distributed? At, at events that you held? At or? events. Okay. Mm -hmm. Our fifth essential service is um, develop policies and plans that support individual and community health efforts. Our emergency preparedness planning um, and our strategic plan is listed under this. Um, we have several emergency preparedness plans um, held at public health specific to public health emergencies. We exercise these plans regularly. In 2018, we did a point of distribution exercise at Lowell Academy. The scenario was a hepatitis A outbreak. Um, we had 155 people that came through, which tested our ability to administer the immunoglobulin and the vaccine to the entire affected population. Um, and we try to get that done in as short an amount of time as possible. I know I saw some of the legislators went through that. Yes. Yeah. Some twice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you for your participation. Um, we have a five-year strategic plan, which we are um, always working on. So specifically in 2018, the health communication and social marketing under infrastructure was worked on. Uh, we also participated <coughs> in the Lewis County Space Study, which was early 2018. Um, the Workforce Development Plan was started, and um, we participated in the Employee Satisfaction Survey, and our business staff was reorganized um, to increase efficiencies there and maximize staff time use. Um, <coughs> strategic partnerships, we <coughs> started the Lewis County Immunization Coalition. Um, so we bought, brought together 13 non-traditional partners um, and they just had their fourth meeting uh, last Tuesday. So that group's going well. Um, research and data-driven performance, like I said earlier, we track data constantly and try to use that data to inform any kind of action that we take. <coughs> um, our last priority area is lifelong health and well-being. So we incorporated health literacy into our health communication and social marketing plan um, because that's important for people to understand how to be healthy and they can't do that without the knowledge and understanding of the information that's being given to them. <coughs> Uh, we also <coughs> tried to accommodate as many people as we could with our evidence-based programs, offering them via phone and web. Our sixth service is enforce laws and regulations that protect health and safety. We do not do much um, with this because we are a partial service health department. So the Watertown District Office does most of the enforcement um, for us. We do do animal control, though. 
Um, our animal control officer made 35 home visits in 2018, and this is just on animal bites, ensuring that they're up to date with uh, rabies vaccine, tracking down owners, ensuring that the quarantine or confinement, I'm sorry, is done properly. So the trigger to that is uh, <laughs> somebody who reports being bit through the they come from like the emergency room at the hospital and they notify you that there's dog bites? We get them several different ways. A lot from school nurses, a lot from the ER. Oh, okay. um, sometimes people will self-report, doctor's offices. And then we always follow up. Um, seven is link people to needed personal health services. We have our children with special needs programs and cancer, cancer service program and our free clinical services under here. Um, the Children with Special Needs Program, Child Find is for children zero to two. Um, they had 17 on in 2018. Early intervention is also zero to two. There was 84 children on in 2018. Um, the pre <coughs> preschool program had 196. <coughs> That's ages three to four. Children with Special Health Care Needs had 17, um, and that's just a, basically a one-time phone call and referring them to where they need to be. Um, the Physically Handicapped Children's Program had 30, and both the Children with Special Health Care Needs and Physically Handicapped are 0 to 18. Cancer <laughs> Services Program um, served 133 individuals, um, allowed them to get their screening. They were uninsured individuals. Of those 130, 26 diagnostic tests were then done and three cancer diagnoses. Um, public Health stopped providing this service in September. Oswego County Opportunities and the St. Lawrence Health Initiative currently have the grant for this for the next five years and they will be serving Lewis County. And that is our Cancer <laughs> Services Program Coordinator leaving us. <laughs> she was done at the end of December. How will the transportation to the Oswego and St. Lawrence be handled? Individually? Is there you don't go there. Oh, it's don't. purely over the phone. They oh. case manage. Um, <coughs> they get information to allow you to receive the services here in Lewis County. They'll be contracting with the providers just like we were um, to pay for those services. Do they, do they circulate this grant? Is that what happens? Is that why you're not They regionalized it. it. Yeah. So there's four counties under it. Yeah. Where before it was Lewis and Jefferson County, and that was fine for us to manage, but with four counties, it was better suited somewhere else that serves that large area. Um, free clinical services, we did um, two HIV, five hepatitis C, 34 blood lead and 34 hemoglobin laboratory tests in our office. We gave out um, 29 free vaccines to adults and 184 to children. Flu vaccine or other kinds? All, All vaccines. Kinds. We have free vaccine for adults who are uninsured and um, for children who are on Medicaid and uninsured. And then we um, we did nine infant maternal child home visits. We didn't do, we used to do a lot of pregnant women postpartum. We have community health workers who are going into the homes now who are doing a lot of this work. Um, number eight, assuring a competent public health and personal health care workforce. Our workforce development plan falls under this. We did training this year to learn how to develop a workforce development plan. We collected data on training needs, um, and the document is in the beginning stages. Number nine, we're almost done. Um, <laughs> evaluate effectiveness, accessibility, and quality of personal and population-based health services. Our public health accreditation work and district falls under this. So before 2018, we started working on public health accreditation. There's several required documents. Um, so we did our community health assessment and improvement plan, our quality improvement plan, our strategic plan, 
and we completed the training uh, to start the accreditation process. In 2018, we did the health communication and social marketing plan and continued work on all of the other plans. Um, in the coming future, in 2019, we need to do the community health assessment improvement plan again. Um, the workforce development plan will be done. We need to do a self-assessment that's looking over all of our documentation to make sure we're ready for accreditation. Um, and then we will submit a letter of intent. What will accreditation do for you? So <laughs> accreditation is not required right now. It's not linked to any funding. However, there is talks yeah, that it will be. Um, it just ensures that you meet the highest standard for a public health department. The Delivery System Reform Incentive Program, also known as DISRIP, we participate in two of them um, at the health department, the Central New York Care Collaborative out of Syracuse and the North Country Initiative out of Watertown. Between the two, we met 60 deliverables and <coughs> that resulted in $34,000 in revenue. The last um, service is research for new insights and innovative solutions to health problems. Um, and the performance incentive program falls under this. The New York State Department of Health puts this on. Um, we participated in the program since 2013. And 2018 was a year that they looked at Legionella case investigations and the timeliness and completeness of those. Um, we were awarded the $2,600 for meeting those performance measures. And we've actually been awarded every year. So most of these um, are around communicable disease investigations. Does anybody have any questions?